Hey, welcome back everyone. Thank you so much for taking time to watch another Azure Fundamentals video. In this module, we're going to talk about the core Azure Identity Services. My name is Sushant Sutish and I'm your instructor for this AZ900 Azure Fundamentals course. In this lesson, we're going to talk about authorization and authentication. And we're going to go through some of the high level features which comes with Azure Active Directory. And finally, we're going to explore what is Azure multi-factor authentication and how you can and how you can benefit from multi-factor authentication. The two fundamental concepts that need to be understood while talking about identity and access are authentication and authorization. They underpin everything else that happens and occurs sequentially in any identity and access process. Authentication is the process of establishing the identity of a person or service looking to access a resource. It involves the act of challenging a party for legitimate credentials and provides the basis for creating a security principle for identity and access control use. It establishes if they are who they say they are. Authorization is the process of establishing what level of access an authenticated person or service has. It specifies what data they are allowed to access and what they can do with it. Authentication is sometimes shortened as AuthN and authorization is sometimes shortened as AuthZ or Auth Z. Azure Active Directory is Microsoft cloud-based identity and access management service. Azure AD helps employees of an organization sign in and access resources. Azure AD can be used for external resources or internal resources as well. Azure AD provides services such as authentication, single sign-on, app management, B2B, B2C, etc. So let's look at these in detail. Authentication, this includes verifying identity to access application and resources and providing functionalities such as self-service password reset, multi-factor authentication, a custom band password list, and smart lockout features as well. Single sign-on or SSO, enables users to remember only one ID and one password to access multiple applications. A single identity is tiered to a user, simplifying the security models. As users change roles or leave an organization, access modifications are tied to that identity, greatly reducing the effort to need to change or disable accounts. You can manage your cloud and on-prem app using Azure AD Application Proxy, Single Sign-On, My Apps Portal, also, rep also referred as Access Panel, and SaaS Apps. Business to Business or B2B is an identity services. B2B allows you to manage your guest users and external partners while maintaining control over your own corporate data. Business to customer or B2C is also an identity services, which will help you customize and control how users sign up, sign in, and manage their profiles when using your apps with services. Device management lets you manage how your cloud or on-prem devices access your corporate data. Let's quickly have a look at Azure AD in the Azure portal. So you can go to all services and type in Azure AD. All right, this is your Azure Active Directory. So you can click on users to view both your cloud-born users, your guest users like invited user, or Windows Server AD users. Those are the users which is migrated or moved from your on-prem AD your Azure Active Directory. Then we have groups. 
This include all the groups which you created within the in the Azure Active Directory or the groups which is migrated over to Azure AD from your on-prem as well. You can enable self-service group management to your users as well. Then we have features like enterprise applications. This is where you can allow users to access multiple other vendor applications to use a single identity, which is your Azure Active Directory or your Office 365 identity. So you can click on new applications to add an app which you want to integrate with your Azure AD. This can be a gallery app or this can be something which you're developing as well. Under security is where you can configure a lot of additional things like conditional access, uh, your multi-factor authentication, etc. This is where you configure the device enrollment point. If you would like to modify your custom domain to something different, this is where you can come and add a custom domain as well. You can manage your licenses within Azure AD. You can go to all products, which will list down all the licenses which is available and who it is been assigned to, how many is been available and when which one is going to be expired soon. As you notice, there are a lot of things you can do within Azure AD. So I have barely touched the surface. When you go and learn about MS100 and MS101 and MS500, you will dive deep into Azure Active Directory. So now for this AZ900, this knowledge is fairly enough for sitting for that exam. Now let's explore multi-factor authentication. Azure multi-factor authentication provides additional security for your identities by requiring two or more elements for full authentication. These elements fall into three categories. Something you know, something you possess, and something you are. Something you know could be a password or the answer to a security question. Something you possess might be a mobile app that receives a notification or token generating device. Something you are is typically some sort of a biometric property, such as a fingerprint or a face scan used by many mobile devices. Multi-factor comes as part of following Microsoft Azure service offerings. The first one is Azure Active Directory Premium Licenses. Another way to get multi-factor authentication is for your Office 365 services. And the third is Azure Active Directory Global Administrators. Because Global Administrators accounts are highly sensitive, a subset of Azure multi-factor authentication capabilities are available to protect these accounts. So let me quickly jump into the portal to show you where you can configure that. So now I'm in my Azure AD portal. I can go to Users. And there is another tab over here which you can click to go to multi-factor authentication. So depending on the license you have, you can pretty much view which users you have enabled within your organization have MFA, which users don't have an MFA enabled. If you would like to enable it, you can simply click on enable and that gives you option to enable multi-factor authentication. You can go to service settings. This is where you can configure trusted IP. When you configure the trusted IP, users who is part of that IP address will not be prompted for a dual factor authentication. You can come over here to configure the verification method. You can pick and choose how many verification method you want to choose. Do you want to give a call to a user or a text phone or a notification to your phone, a notification to an app as well. And this is where you can configure, remember the multi-factor authentication for how many number of days. So users will not be prompted for a second multi-factor authentication if they have already gone through a verification within these many number of days. Once you made the necessary changes, you can click on the save. I'm not gonna do that now. I'm gonna simply close this tab. That's a quick view on how to configure the multi-factor authentication. 
I hope the information provided on the last module was useful. In the next one, we're going to talk about AIP and ATP. AIP is Azure Information Protection and ATP is Azure Advanced Threat Protection. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.